Um, so here I've got a class called car, which I haven't created yet, and my spec file. So I'm going to create a class called car. And it's a simple class. It has a dunder init, self, has a brand, and it's got two instance variables, self.brand equals, not branch. And whether or not this car or this car brand or an instance of this brand uh, of this car has any defects. Defect. And initially, hopefully, when you buy a car, it doesn't have any defects. Um, but yeah. All right. So this car has. Um, a couple of instance or instance methods called def where and tear that is only going to return a random number between zero and one. And that represents a Boolean value or it's going to rep represent a true or falsy. Um, zero is a falsy and one is a truthy statement. So um, return, again, this is going to only return a random number between zero and one. Uh, so I'm going to use, excuse me, uh, from random import rand int. And then this method should return a value between zero and one. And I can't remember if one is inclusive or exclusive in the rand int, but I can see that if I just Google it. Let's Google exclusive. It. It's exclusive? Yes, it goes all the way up to 0 0.99. All right. So rand int uh, between zero and two then. You also might be able to hover over it and it'll tell you at least one of my VS code extensions does that. Well, must be nice. What VS code extension is that? I'll go look. I don't okay. know. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. So, um, and it, again, I can always just Google it as well. Random, rand, int, Python, uh, rand, Int a random number integer. So a so it looks like it is inclusive. Uh well, we can always test it out anyway. So you can test it for. Or it doesn't even matter because two is also a truthy value. Um, so cool. <clears throat> and next, uh we also have another method called def um take damage. That doesn't take in any uh, arguments or anything. And based off of this argument or this instant method, whether this is a truth returns a truly a truthy or falsy value, we're going to say, hey, it's going to take a defect. So if self dot where and tear, that's true. It's there's th going to be know, what kind of defects can we have? Um, like breaks, what other defects can we have? Um, panel gap, is it panel gaps? <laughs> the Tesla's are kind of been having issues with or have had issues with in the past. Um, check engine. Oh, what else? What are there some defects? Transmission. 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 All right, yeah, that's good enough. All right. So <clears throat> based on, so these are the defects that this car can have. So if this wear and tear returns a truthy value, it's going to select a random choice from this array. And fortunately, 
the random library has, oh, there it is, choice. So random.choice returns a random element from a non-empty sequence or a list. So the defect self.defect equals choice uh, defects. So pass in a list into choice, and it's going to pick a random defect from that. So now I'm going to also have to um, yeah, import choice as well. And then else uh, self.defect equals none. Because maybe it gets fixed and or this is if we run the wear and tear on it a bunch of times. Um, so if I wanted to create a car instance, car, uh, name a car brand that you like or want to have or you currently own. Come on, somebody. Honda. Ford. There we go. <laughs> Honda. So if I print Honda or car one uh, dot brand uh, defect, and I run that. Let's do Python car dot Honda defect. And now I can do car dash one dot take damage. So it's going to take some damage. It's going to generate a random number between zero and one or zero and two. If it's zero, it's a falsy value. So this is no longer, it's not a true statement. And we can see what that does. So none, now it's transmission. And we can always see kind of, um, well, I guess we can't see, but we can actually see what uh, print car one dot wear and tear actually does. So, yeah, so yeah, it's picks zero and two. So we can actually make that one. So initially it's panel gaps. Breaks, breaks. Wait, why does that? Huh? That's not right. So if zero. Oh, not rand int. I'm sorry. Range. That's what I'm looking for. Where's rand range? So it's inclusive. And I think it's just the oh, pylance, by yeah. the way. <clears throat> I'm sorry? I think the plugin is just pylance, because I disabled oh. it and then re-enabled it, and it came back. And it says, yeah, returns, returns random integer, including both endpoints. OK, awesome. So sometimes when it, if, it, if it's 0, um, it returns none. So this is our class. Now let's write some unit tests and just to make sure that everything is uh, covered in this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is import unit test uh, from car import car. Um, I might use the patch at some point to because right here, this is generating a random integer, maybe a random value. Maybe I want to explicitly say, hey, make this value zero or one instead of having the unit test randomly do it for me. Um, so, but I'll get to that when I, when I get to it. So I'm gonna do car test or test, could be whatever, test cars. Uh, inherits from the unit test test case class 
from the unit test library. And <clears throat> I need to create a car instance for each, um, for each unit test. So how can I create an instance to be used for each unit test? Does anybody know of a method in the unit test library that I can create a variable, instance variable, anything that will be used in every single unit test? Setup. Setup, yep. So def setup, this method runs before each unit test. So I'm gonna create a uh, car one equals car. And I guess we'll use Honda. So self.car1. So now I'll have access to this instance inside of every unit test I write. So what should we, let's first test this part. Make sure it has instance variables. So test car creation takes in self. And we can use self.assert equal. So these are all a bunch of different built-in methods in our unit test library that we can use. We might use some of them, such as like uh, is not is none or is instance. We might use those. Um, so yeah, like it, for example, is none is perfect for this because the initial value of defect is none. So assert equals self dot car one dot defect should equal, or I guess that is automatically none. And you can read the documentation. And then else assert equals or equal self dot car one dot brand to equal Honda. All right, and then if Dunder name equals Dunder main unit test dot main. Always need that. All right, let's write a couple more. So test car creation. Uh, let's see, let's see. Let's test this one. So since we are using a random range method in here, or we can fake this method. Does anybody remember the syntax or the name of the something that we can fake, whether it's faking a class or faking some kind of object in a unit test? mock yep mock is one of them it's from mock so from unit test mock so if i type in mock is it even in here oh uh, whoop i don't want to save that unit test mock python <clears throat> so here's the mock library so we have mock which is what we want, but specifically we'll want patch. So we have this method patch that we can, you can pass it in, use it as a decorator or just use it as a, where's the value? Uh, so here's an example, use it as a decorator or something like this with patch. So we'll use mock uh, import patch. So we tested the car creation. Next def, let's test the wear and tear method. So we can say with patch in the car um, file using the rand and rand range method let's create a fake value as fake rand range 
and we can say, hey, the Rand range, or fake Rand range dot return value. So the return value in this method comes from this fake Rand range that comes from the patch method. This is all built in the unit test mock module. This is all to fake data. And this return value comes from this patch method. And you can read it. Um, so like return value right here. Um, you can see of what we want that value to actually return. So we can hard code that because ran range takes in a random value, but we can explicitly define that value uh, here so we can test it. So if we're assigning this fake random range in this random range module to equal zero, we can say, hey, when we self assert equal, when we actually call, um the self dot car one dot wear and tear we're gonna get zero so this is simulating making this value zero and then we can also see how many times or what values are we passing into this rand range method here? So like what are what arguments are we actually passing in to this rand range function by passing in fake value or any value in here? So we can do that by running fake rand range dot assert uh called once with zero and one. So let's actually run these. Python, uh, nope, was it unit test? Car spec, uh-oh. Branch, what am I doing branch? Why do I keep saying branch? So this ran two tests. Um, cool. So it's like, all right, how do I know what else to test? And again, we're talking about code coverage. So I ran these two, or I'm testing these two, but I haven't tested this at all. But how do I know I haven't tested that? If someone's just in here looking, running unit tests, um, <clears throat> and there is a way we can test what where what code has been executed in our test unit test. Uh, so yeah, we can actually see what code is actually ran in our unit test from the car or essentially what code from our car class has been ran in our unit test. And before we jump into that, <clears throat> if, I needed, so if I had two applications running on my machine or I needed to run two applications and those two applications required two different versions of some library, how would I be able to make sure each application is running its respective library version. You install it just within that one file, right? Or folder or, or environment, whatever it is. All right, well, you, the last one you said environment. <laughs> <laughs> um, but how does it know what environment I'm in? Because if I do like, pip install, so pip is just like uh, npm install in node, pip install, I think you guys did this on Saturday, pip install pandas. Um, but what if I only wanted to install pandas or some other library just within this car 
this code coverage directory. And you said environment. So there's a way like, so in node, we used to have that package.json file that had every library that we had installed and the versions of those libraries. That's how node separated each library and their versions from each uh, package or each application. But in Python, it's different. We can't, because um, Python doesn't have like a package.json file. What in Python does has what is called a virtual environment, where what we do is essentially create a bubble around our code within our computer. So we don't, when we install, when we create this virtual environment or this bubble around our code, we can install any kind of package we want in there and it won't affect anything on our outside machine, on our computer, it won't affect any other applications. All those packages are confined to that virtual environment inside of that little bubble. So I don't know if you've ever watched Seinfeld back in the day, the bubble boy episode where the kid was in a bubble. He had to live in a bubble because he, he had to be protected by all the germs of the outside world. Um, so that allows us to uh, keep each package or I'm sorry, each application insulated from outside libraries and their versions. Questions about virtual environments. So right here, if I do pip list, these are all the packages that are installed like at the top layer of my machine. So these packages, I already have access to these within this uh, code base, but I don't want that. I want this little car and car spec application to be insulated. And I can create a virtual environment around this car and car spec in this, the same directory as my car and car spec. I'm going to create a virtual environment. And I can create one by calling running Python dash M for make a virtual environment, V E N V. And then the name of my virtual environment, I'm just gonna call it Tom's uh, VENV, virtual environment. And as you see, it's taking a little while. We notice a new virtual environment has been created. Do you want to select it for the workspace folder? I'm just gonna say no right now. And also noticed that a folder got created called Tom's virtual environment or VENV. So anytime I install packages, I want them to be installed inside of this virtual environment. So I just created a virtual environment, but I'm not actually in it yet. I haven't activated the virtual environment. And just keep an eye on this TA preet of what's gonna happen right before it. Um, so in order to activate Tom's virtual environment, I can call this whatever I want like this Tom's V and V, I can call it literally like whatever. Like I can literally call it whatever virtual environment or just whatever. But in order to activate Tom's V and V, I need to run source, the name of my virtual environment, which is Tom's V E N V slash bin slash activate. And if I click that, watch what happens with, uh, this path, file path. Notice how it says Tom's VENV right now. That means I'm actively in the virtual environment. Now, remember before when I wasn't in the virtual environment, I ran pip list, the list all, of all the packages I have installed. So I have like a lot of them installed at my root directory. But if I run pip list now, I only have two packages installed. So I'm like coming up, I'm, I'm starting with a clean slate of packages. Questions. How do you back out? Yep. So I'm in this virtual environment. Now, how do I get out of it? All I have to write type is deactivate. 
and now I'm out of it. To reactivate it, I can do source, Tom's VE and V, bin, activate. Now I'm back in it. And if you, you'll never do anything in this folder, but you can see bin, activate, these are all um, file, like files that kind of run the virtual environment. <clears throat> You're gonna get really used to creating virtual environments um, in the near future. All right, so let's get back to making sure our unit tests are covering all of our code in our car class. Luckily, there's a package or a module that we can install that will do that for us. And it's called coverage. Uh, so if I type in coverage, Python, not coverage, it, um, there's this really good package right here. So coverage is a tool for measuring code coverage of Python programs. It monitors a program, noting which parts of the code have been executed, then analyzes the source to identify the code could have been executed, but was not. Cool. So let's test code coverage. So in order to install it, I can run pip install coverage. So I'm inside my virtual environment, which is good. I can run pip install coverage. It's like, all right, you're using, so it's installed, successfully installed coverage. I can make sure it's installed by running pip list. And you can see coverage is installed. Clear the terminal. But in running, instead of running Python car spec to run my unit tests, all I have to do is run coverage run tests.py. And what that's going to do when I run that, it's going to create another directory with a bunch of files in it. If I run that, uh, what did it say? No file run. Oh, uh, not test, car spec. So coverage run car spec. So two tests ran, great. They passed, but now, what would it do? Oh yeah. <clears throat> so it created this file. But next, what I want to do is actually see like a, a visual representation of that coverage report. So I'm gonna run this coverage.html and that's what's gonna create that other directory. So coverage.html. And in here, we've got this HTML coverage. If I open that up, I can actually execute this stuff. Um, so if I CD into HTML cov, and if I run open car.p, well, actually I'll open up index.html, open index.html. And notice coverage report is 86%. We've got three file or two files, car.py, statements. There's four missing, excluded, the car spec, everything ran. So it looks like I'm missing some code in the car spec. So I can click on that and open that up into a new VS Code window, or I'm sorry, new Chrome window. And you can see from the car class file what code has ran, which is green, and what code has not ran. So these are, so what code is not covered right now. And you can also just open up the car dot car underscore py file directly if you wanted to. So open car underscore py, and that will also open up that as well. It's kind of nice just because it gives us a little coverage report of how how well we are testing our code as far from a coverage standpoint. Yeah. All right. So with that, let's go ahead and actually finish writing our unit test to cover this other take damage method. So I can do def 
test uh, damage taken. It takes in self. All right. So what I'm going to need here, I'm going to need a value for wear and tear. So I'm going to need a value for this and some other value for this. <clears throat> so I can do something very similar to what I'm doing up here with the patch. Like so, but instead of being a falsy value, which comes down to here, I want it to be a truthy value. I want this to come into here. So it's one, <clears throat> but also I've got this choice. I want to be able to make sure, I want to be able to check to make sure that it creates like a choice from these. So I'll ha also have to do with patch uh, car dot choice as fake choice. Fake choice dot return value. Uh, let's say it is panel gaps for this one. All right. And now if I actually execute take damage, <clears throat> the defect should be breaks. So if I run self dot car underscore one dot take damage, is that what it's called? And now I can run self dot assert equal self dot car one dot defect should equal panel gaps. <clears throat> and I can also test whether or not a function is called. So this rand range, I can see if this value was actually called. This ran range method was actually called inside of this piece of code by running self dot, uh, oh, sorry, uh, fake ran range dot assert called, just to make sure that that value was called, not ask. Ask assert called. There it is. So I can do the same thing. Run all that coverage. What happened? Oh, CD. Three tests ran, now they're all good. Now run coverage at HTML, wrote my report. I can come up here, refresh that. So now statements have 12, only one is missing now. All right, so I'm still missing something. Uh, I can close that, open up the car.py to see what that, what's been ran for that. And it looks like everything's been ran except for that final else statement. So now I got to make sure that that case is covered. And I can do that by doing test uh, damage none takes in self. And I can do the same thing up here, but instead of fake random range to equal one, I can make it equal zero. <clears throat> and then I can say, self.car underscore one, take damage, and self assert is, what is it? assert is none, because that is gonna be none. Self.car one dot defect should equal none. So I can run that entire thing again, run coverage car spec, Four tests ran, they all passed. Now let's actually see what coverage I'm covering. I can just refresh this one if I wanted to. And it looks like all 12 statements were ran. And I'm missing zero lines of code. I can run that report again. 
to equal 100%. So I've officially covered 100% of my code in my unit test, but that doesn't mean uh, I am sufficiently covered all different test cases, edge cases, et cetera. What questions do you have about code coverage, the coverage library? You have to read through a, a lot of documentation to um, get it to work, um, virtual environments, et cetera. I have a question, Tom. I apologize if you no, yeah. covered it early on. The, when you're passing that string into patch, uh, you have the car module. Rand range is a is a function that's being called, but it's not a property. It's not a instance variable of cars. So to see it called that way is kind of throwing me. I know. Yeah, it th th threw me too. Just. Don't think of this car or rand range as an instance variable or method or anything, because it really has nothing to do um, with the actual car class. I think it has to do with, um, I don't want to, I, I don't know specifically, but it doesn't, it's, it's not associated with an instance variable or anything on the car class. I think it might be that this is where this is located, it's in the car file, um, but I could be mistaken. Does anybody know? I haven't dug deep into the documentation to see why that is. But yeah, it's, it's not an attribute on the car class. Got it. Yeah, I was gonna speculate and wonder or ask the question if it's just the file name. That would be my intuition, but I can't 100% say for sure. but it would make sense that it is the car because the car or the file name. <clears throat> what other questions do you have? Uh, I also apologize if you already covered this, but uh, what what is the benefit to doing this inside of the environment as opposed to just doing it outside? So you might need a different, so outside of the environment. So maybe I had another library or i'm sorry another um, application instead of car maybe in some other piece of code i also needed to use the coverage library but i needed to use a different version of it so if i do pip list i'm using 6.3.1 in my tom's venv but maybe in some other old application i have uh, i'm only using like five uh, or version five, and it only works on version five. So I, I'll need to have different virtual environments that have the respective versions of each package in the virtual environment. I see. Okay. Thank you. Yep. And you will encounter that, not necessarily virtual environments, um, but where if you're on the job and, you know, maybe you're working at a company where they're using a few versions behind of a specific, you know, framework or something. Um, Cause they're not going to always be using the most up-to-date um, versions because it might break their entire application. And a lot of money is riding on that. A good question. Is it more common to use virtual environments versus not using them? Is there, <laughs> I mean, I understand not wanting to interfere with other things that have been installed, but I'm still having a hard time understanding like when you, when to use it, when not to use it. Yep. So in different languages have different, um, operate differently as far as using virtual environments, not using virtual environments. So in Python, you'll be using virtual environments almost all of the time. Um, now in other like JavaScript and Node, there aren't virtual environments. They just don't exist in that language. Um, that's why you have that package.json file to, to determine uh, what versions to install on that application. Um, Ruby, same thing. They have their own files that store that have the versions. So there isn't a virtual environment. Um, so it's pretty much Python right now. 
that use virtual environments. That answer your question? Yes, thank you. Cool. All right. 